Hi, I'm Alexander Solner. I'm a second year PhD student in Ellen Cool's lab. Hi, I'm Adrian Buganza and I'm a third year graduate student here at Stanford. I work with Professor Ellen Cool, who's a Symbios faculty, and my project is on modeling skin growth. Skin growth is using a technique uh, called skin expansion that reconstructive surgeons use to resurface large defects because it allows to grow skin that has the same properties as the surrounding tissue. So it's ideal to reconstruct, for example, large congenital defects uh, called nevi or after tumor removal or after burns. So the way this is done clinically is you implant a balloon below the skin and then you inflate it over a period of several weeks, six to eight weeks. And at the end of this period, the skin has grown. So when you remove the, the expander, you have actually extra skin that you can use to resurface the defect. And the way the physicians choose the expanders they want to use today is based on their experience and their training and some simple calculations that they do trying to estimate based on the volume of the expander how much new skin they're going to get. But this is often not accurate because uh, they, they use just simple geometrical models and they don't include any of the elastic properties of the skin or the adaptation properties of the skin. So it's error prone, uh, it leads to suboptimal flap design and at the end maybe the physician has to do instead of one single expansion it has to do sequential expansions in order to harvest all the skin that it needs to resurface a large defect. The way we model this is with continuum mechanics and finite elements. The continuum mechanics formulation allows us to describe the formation of the tissue at every point and based on the stretch at every point in the tissue we can determine how, mo how more new skin we are going to get over time. And to solve this over a geometry, we use finite elements. Finite elements uh, is a numerical technique that allows you to take a complex geometry and break it into little pieces in which you can perform operations easily. And then you assemble that back together to recover the behavior of the full geometry. To demonstrate our model's capabilities in a clinical setting, we went for patient-specific geometries. In order to do that, you first have to image. So you have to use uh, CT scans or MRI scans of a patient that you then segment. After the, the segmentation, you create an initial mesh that you have to further filter in order to get a smooth mesh that you can use for a finite element simulation. After doing that, we put in virtual expanders into our geometry that we inflated over time to model a clinical case of skin expansion. Here we have the results of such a simulation. You can see three expanders implanted in the patient, one in the forehead, one in the skull, and one in the cheek. And you can see the, the color coding, which means whether you have a red color, that means that you have a lot of skin growth at that position, and a blue and green and less skin growth. Here in this simulation movie, you can actually see that we have simulated two expanders that are next to each other, and we can even simulate the interactions between those expanders and how that would affect the patient and the final shape of the skin flap that is grown. While you were able to see the spatiotemporal evolution of skin growth in the videos earlier, we can also quantify skin growth in terms of how much skin is actually permanently grown and how much is just elastically stretched. In the future, we would like to calibrate our model with clinical or animal data in order to actually have models that represent what's happening in the clinic. Then, we hope to apply our models for surgery planning, for medical device development and we're actually really happy to work together with people in clinical settings that are interested in our work. Please visit our website at biomechanics.stanford.edu, shoot us an email or just come over and visit us here at Stanford.